The night skies were filled with horrifying oh, screech oh, and oh. screams of the 46-year-old bear enthusiast as he vainly struggled against the massive brown beast being feasted on by a creature he had dedicated years of his life to advocating for. A few meters away, hiding out of sight, as she watched her partner get tackled, overwhelmed, and torn apart, watched Amy Huguenard as she awaited the same fate as Timothy Treadwell. In today's video, we are going to be taking a closer look into the history of the first known fatal bear attacks in Alaska Katmai National Park, which went viral in several countries, causing a lot of distress from the public about wildlife enthusiasts and how they interact with nature. October 5, 2003 Katmai National Park and Preserve. Treadwell went on to set up the camp, but was feeling a bit too calm for his last night with his bear friends. He was already saddened by the fact that he couldn't see his favorite bear again, and so hoped that she would come by that evening or later in the morning when they prepared to leave. All these ideas left Treadwell feeling hopeful, too hopeful. He didn't consider that other bears wouldn't be so friendly. He set up his camp, but unlike other times, he left out the protective gear required to keep the wild beast out, and didn't use the bear spray either. Later at dawn, Treadwell heard rustling in the woods and instinctively knew a bear was lurking around. He was excited about the occurrence and wondered if maybe it was his favorite female bear stopping by to say hi before they leave. He jumped out of the tent toward the sound, while Amy didn't think much of it assuming he was playing one of his weird habits. Eventually, he would be back, and they would be gone by tomorrow. Things took a turn for the worst, as Amy could hear rustling and strange noises coming from outside the tent, like a struggle happening outside. She was frightened by the idea of Treadwell getting attacked by bears, and her fear of the grizzlies started to kick in. She finally heard Treadwell scream, telling her he was getting killed out here. Feeling hesitant to check, she reached for the exit of the tent to observe the situation. What she saw through the dim night left her in auto shock. Treadwell was on the ground with a brown grizzly hovering over him, and it didn't look like anything friendly. The moment she spotted blood leaking from bite marks on Treadwell's leg, she screeched in fright. This shocked the bear, which hadn't noticed her and sent it retreating, but only for a while. While Treadwell gasped in relief, thinking it was all over, the bear returned to complete what it started. Amy screamed to Timothy to play dead severely, and though Timothy did try playing dead, it was obvious it did not affect the beast. She then shouted for him to fight back, which he did. Treadwell fought back, hitting and smacking the bear while it wrestled him down and continued to chow down on him. He couldn't handle the pain of having bits of flesh torn from his body and screamed to Amy, begging her to hit it with a stick continually. Amy, who had been screaming and shouting at the bear, acted by throwing stones and sticks, whatever she could find at the beast, but the grizzly seemed unfazed, giving low grunts as it continued devouring Treadwell. Eventually, Treadwell knew it was the end for him. His fate was sealed, but didn't wish the same for poor Amy. In his last words, he shouted to Amy, Get out of here! I'm getting killed! Almost as if the bear understood what he intended, it left the mauled body of Treadwell and turned towards Amy still hiding in their tent. She tried to barricade herself, but it proved useless as the bear clawed through. Then she tried escaping, but she was no match for the grizzly. Her last moments were spent screaming in true terror before there was silence. Timothy had always seen something different about bears, and grizzlies to be particular. He had always looked upon these wild creatures as profound animals who needed guidance and could be more than what the world saw them as. This, however, was a view far from what reality held. He was known to be very intense with how he carried out his passion. Some even described him as careless and abrupt. Maybe even a con artist who never really cared for the bears but was more inclined toward Hollywood stardom. These claims were of the fact that through advocating for the protection of bears, he would instantly react to visitors or companies willing to host educational research on bears by scaring off the animals and disrupting their campaigns. 
others saw just his roleplay as a fantasy gone mad. Either way, whether Timothy was hell-bent on the ideology of being the caretaker of bears, or was just in it for fame, he definitely did receive some of that spotlight, thanks to a book he wrote about his expeditions in the wild. It was titled, Among Bears, Living with Wild Bears in Alaska, and in promoting his book, had landed on popular shows like one he did with Letterman. This led to many celebrities supporting his course, and probably would have pushed his zeal to fight for his newfound passion even further. Just a bit too far, it led to his demise. Before Timothy had ever developed an interest in wildlife and bears, he had a pretty intriguing life before that, which led many to wonder about what was really going on in his mind and what it truly was that he sought. Born in 1957 as Timothy Dexter on Long Island, the sports jug seemed to have something going for him, excelling exceptionally well in swimming competitions and had even scored himself an athletic scholarship at Bradley University. Many of his officials would even brag about his record-setting scores, such as the three-meter springboard record he set. Being amazingly fit for the sports, it's unknown why he suddenly dropped just after two years. Though Treadwell's father had a different story to tell about how his son had lost his scholarship due to an injury he experienced to his back, which forced him to quit school. From here on, the Treadwell went through many other phases and relocated even more, firstly stopping by New York, which would send him down a dark phase with the cops. He would occasionally get arrested on DUI charges, but soon enough, Treadwell decided the busy city was just not for him, and went on to chase even bigger dreams as a superstar in Hollywood, California. It's worth noting that despite the rumors of Treadwell being a con man who never cared much for wildlife, the future grizzly man had always carried a stuffed animal with him, which he took almost everywhere. Whether it was just a souvenir from home, or he truly admired the representation of wildlife, we will never know. Moving to California to chase his dream of becoming a movie actor, Treadwell received a glimmer of hope after his audition for the movie Cheers, which he was supposed to score a part of. Sadly, he came in second to another actor, Woody Harrelson, who had gotten the role. This must have broken Treadwell deeply from within, as he found himself tragically grasped in the addiction of cocaine and heroin. You could say he escaped the clutches of death once, or that death had it coming for him, as Treadwell had actually survived a fatal overdose on these drugs, which gave him a slap back to reality and had him on a journey to Alaska. Here, the grizzly man was born, as during this trip, Treadwell had made his first close encounters with bears and wildlife, which burned a new flame in him leading to his complete change in persona. He changed up himself completely, taking up Timothy Treadwell and leaving behind Dexter, a surname derived from his mother's ancestors. Almost as if in an attempt to separate himself from his past, he created a new ego in which he believed and impersonated British and Australian wildlife enthusiasts. He even crafted a story of being raised as an orphan. It's unknown if Treadwell was putting up an act for the show or truly did believe that he was of British accent, but what was known was that his new persona started reflecting off the show on his personal life. All this would, however, be the undoing of Timothy Treadwell. Treadwell went on to spend 13 summers of his life deep within Bear's territory. Being fully aware of the dangers of it all, his belief that he stood above all as the one who could truly understand and get across to Bear's led him down a path with too many close calls with these savage beasts. The evidence of this lies with the video footage retrieved from the remains of scavenged properties of the American bear enthusiast. Out of 13 years with the bears, Treadwell had dedicated six to videography, where he captured many of his dangerous trips to bear areas. These videos would show him sneaking up on the bears without warning, getting nose up close to them, crossing their paths, and trying to communicate with them. What would top the cake was the location he set up his camp. This was right in the middle of the grizzly bear maze, a path many bears used to get over to the other side of the park, meaning they would either be crossing by his tent or using the lakes. 
Biologist Larry Van Dale from the Alaska Department of Fish and Game has described this choice by saying, a person could not have designed a more dangerous location to set up a camp. Treadwell hadn't always been alone, joining him. On the last three years of his expedition in Bears territory was a fan turned lover, Amy Huguenard. Amy had become a fan of Treadwell thanks to his book. Soon the two met up and sparks would fly. She had fallen so deeply for him that despite the fact she actually feared bears, which we know thanks to Treadwell's journal describing it, she chose to leave her home in Colorado and move in with him in Malibu. Amy seemed to have seen the coming storm and would have survived if only she had left sooner, but stayed anyway. The plan was to break up and leave him after they returned to California, but the night before their trip away was not too kind. In Treadwell's journal, he talked about how she felt about his passion and that he was hell-bent on destruction. Before the night of the intense tragedy, the couple had planned to actually leave which would have saved their lives, but many factors played in discouraging the pair like the tickets back being too expensive or that he had not gotten to see a favorite of his bears before leaving, amongst others. Either way, the two returned to their camp at the bear's maze which would soon become their murder scene. Not all is known about that night, but what is known is that Treadwell had set up his camp without any protection, metal wire, or bear spray to keep the grizzly beast away. This could be attributed to his ideology that he was one of the bears. The 5th of October, 2003, and all hell went loose. The tragic fate of Timothy Treadwell has been attributed by many to his fantasy of what the wild was, which was naive and ultimately led to his death. And still today, his death is a story that sends chills down the spines of many others.